Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Black Lives Matter releases plan to take down white corporations and white capitalism. Black Lives Matter just released a plan to take down white corporations and white capitalism in an event called Black Christmas. We're creating a hashtag Black Xmas. No spending with white corporations November 24, 2017 to January 1, 2018. Hashtag divest from white corporations. Hashtag invest in black community. If you must buy. Hashtag buy black, describes the BLM website blacksmith.org. Donald Trump embodies white capitalism. If you are anti-Trump, you should hold back your resources from him and the like. Build new traditions, donate to black-led community-based organizations in the name of your loved ones as holiday gifts, they wrote. Does trying to separate our country by skin color really accomplish anything? California College professor Dr. Melina Abdullah argues in favor of this. We say white capitalism because it's important that we understand that the economic system and the racial structures are connected, she argued. We have to not only disrupt the systems of policing that literally kill our people, but we have to disrupt the white supremacist, capitalistic, patriarchal, heteronormative system that is really the root cause of these police killings, she said. We are socialized to believe that the answer to white oppression is black capitalism. We don't need any black millionaires and multimillionaires, and we don't need a black Walmart. That doesn't free us. In order to get free as a collective, we have to think collectively. It's not enough for one person to draw a profit because that also drains community. It needs to be structured around this idea of collective uplift, argued Abdullah. Watch mother whose son is stuck in Chinese jail teaches Lavar Ball a lesson in respect. President Trump saved three years CLA basketball players from spending 10 years in a Chinese prison. Despite saving their lives, the mainstream media still called Trump a racist for being upset when Lavar Ball, father of one of the players, acted very ungrateful and insulting towards the president. One mother, whose son is still stuck in Chinese prison, went on Fox News to ask for Trump's help. And to teach Lavar Ball a lesson in gratitude. Another mother whose son is stuck in China pleading for President Trump to help her son who has been held in Chinese jail for over a year. She says she would never stop thanking President Trump for his help, explained Fox's Griff Jenkins. The mother, Antoinette Brown, explained her son's situation. He ended up going to China to help a friend coach the doctor's football team and he was also teaching English to the teammates that didn't know English. He had been there for a year. And he ended up going to a friend's birthday party at a bar and he was attacked by a group of locals throwing bottles at him. And unfortunately, he was the only one arrested after the attack on his life, she explained. Antoinette, let us give the floor to you here right now. What would you like to say to President Trump right now? Asked Griff Jenkins. I would humbly ask for him to help my son that's in an unfortunate situation, and I would be truly grateful. And most definitely would thank him with no problem, said Brown. Last night President Trump snuck into a wedding to surprise couple with best gift of all. President Trump has a long history of showing up at the last second to weddings at his golf courses to surprise the people there. Well, to keep up with tradition, he has gone and done it again. This time the president showed up at the Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster Township, New Jersey. He apparently decided to visit his own course after attending the President's Cup in the same area. He hung out with a happy couple and even took pictures with them. Clearly, everyone was having a great time. Trump loves mixing and mingling with the people when he gets the chance to. Sure it was probably only for a minute or two, but that happy couple now has the best wedding story ever to tell.
There is absolutely no harm in having a little fun with normal folks now and again. The left will act like this is his whole presidency, but that's frankly insane. Help share the good feelings everywhere and let them see how happy they are to stand with the president. Just in Vegas Shooter's brother drops a bombshell nobody was expecting. Stephen Craig Paddock, the animal who slaughtered 58 people and injured over 500 others, wasn't exactly destitute as many people might have suspected. You probably thought Paddock had zero dollars in the bank, considering reports suggested he was a degenerate gambler. Wrong. In fact, Paddock was a multimillionaire real estate investor. His brother made that clear. From the Hill. The brother of alleged Las Vegas shooter Stephen Paddock said Monday he was a multimillionaire who worked in real estate. The Associated Press reports that Eric Paddock said his brother also worked as an accountant and that he was unaware of him having any money problems. Who in the world would have figured Paddock to be so rich? Now it's even more of a curiosity why he did what he did. The Vegas shooter's father was once on the FBI's most wanted list for escaping prison. The Islamic State has taken credit for the shooting. Stay tuned for more information as it becomes available. When we know, you'll know. Share this story all over Facebook to expose this monster. Hillary calls for gun control after Vegas massacre. Sarah Sanders brilliantly smacks her down. Stephen Craig Paddock is the man responsible for murdering nearly 60 people and injuring over 500 others in Las Vegas late last night. From the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, Paddock, whose father was once one of the FBI's most wanted for escaping from prison, carried out the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. Twice failed presidential candidate Hillary Clinton immediately politicized the event calling for gun control and saying that prayers were not enough. Then, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders laid the smack down, for Daily Mail. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders suggested Hillary Clinton had no business calling out the National Rifle Association in the hours after Sunday night's Las Vegas mass shooting. It's very easy for Mrs. Clinton to criticize and to come out. But I think we need to remember the only person with blood on their hands is that of the shooter, Huckabee Sanders told reporters from the podium. This isn't the time to go after individuals or organizations, she added. Regarding gun control, Sanders added, I think we can have those policy conversations, but today is not that day. Sanders is obviously right. The NRA is not responsible for what happened. Stephen Paddock is. Share this all over to let everyone know exactly what Hillary and the rest of the left are trying to do. They want everything to be politicized. Minutes ago Trump called Las Vegas sheriff and gave him something unbelievable. Joseph Lombardo is the sheriff of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police said that President Trump called and offered support and prayers. Lombardo called Sheriff Joseph Lombardo on Monday after the gunman opened fire on the music festival. Lombardo then thanked the president for his phone call. Lombardo has been working tirelessly to keep Las Vegas locals up to date. This comes after Trump offered a bit of scripture to all the fallen today. President Trump God lives in the heart of those who grieve. We pray for the entire country to find unity and peace. Trump is praying for America after the shooting. Over 50 people were murdered and there are over 400 people injured. Share this if you are gonna pray for the victims let's show the world how amazing our country is in the face of such disasters. You would never see Hillary on the subject as fast as Trump has gotten to it. Thanks for reading. Denzel Washington debunks idea that the system is against black people, liberals are furious. During an interview about his new movie Roman J. Israel, Esquire, 
famous actor Denzel Washington, argued against the idea that the system is rigged against black people in America. Instead, he revealed the real issue that the black community faces. It starts at the home. It starts at home. It starts with how you raise your children. If a young man doesn't have a father figure, he'll go find a father figure. So you know I can't blame the system. It's unfortunate that we make such easy work for them, said Washington. I grew up with guys who did decades, in prison, and it had as much to do with their fathers not being in their lives as it did to do with any system, explained Washington. Of course, liberals on Twitter were furious with Washington for saying this and they threw all types of insults at him. Fun fact, Denzel Washington has been cast as an officer of the law 16 times, wrote one user, which apparently was an attempt to insult him. Sometimes I wish some of my favorite rappers slash singers slash actors slash actresses wouldn't talk and simply stick to their artistry, wrote another. Denzel means well but lacks a basic understanding of how the system of white supremacy functions. He is looking at symptoms, wrote another. Denzel Washington says don't blame the prison system, so it's blocks PPLS fought we are the victims of white supremacy boy I tell ya these rich Anna's ain't trying to lose their spot in Massa House, wrote another. Why are liberals so horrified by dissenting opinion?